Hi, I'm Randy Altman with Post Perspective. We're here with Dell Technologies' Gary Radburn. Hello, Gary. Hi, Randy. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for joining us. Um, we're here to talk about, well, this whole new world where more and more studios are trying to figure out how to work remotely, how to work from home. Now, this is something that Dell Technologies has been working on for quite some time. And I know that you've recently spent a lot of time on the phone and doing Zoom, Zoom videos with, with customers and, and who were trying to figure out ways. So can you talk about what you are talking to them about and some solutions? Oh, yeah. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. It's, it's great. We're finding ourselves in a strange new world. I, I don't need to harp on about that too much. Um, but there's been a lot of technology that's been around for quite some time, which has had niche uses. Uh, it's had some benefits to organization in terms of cost, flexibility of working, people being able to work from anywhere. Uh, but we still had the, the barriers, I suppose, that, well, why would I want somebody to work from anywhere? Why don't I get them in the office, collaborate with the team? And so you had pigeonholes of people that were enabled to work remotely, and it was very, very effective. Uh, now we're starting to see uh, the world changing now and everybody spending more time at home than they ever have before. Right? Trying to be as effective as they possibly can inside the workflows that they're actually doing. Now, it used to be great in terms of a virtual desktop, uh, applications like Office 365, being able to have an internet connection and still being able to access email and still be productive, web browse and whatever else. That, that's great as far as it goes. But what about the specialized workflows? What about the people that actually had specialist equipment like workstations? They can't just do that from a web browser. They can't just do that from a piece of equipment they might have at home. They need to be enabled in a far more robust way to be able to be effective in their day-to-day -day job. So some of the technology we're now seeing come to light again, you know, second resurgence, I suppose. Uh, I've had a very, very strong relationship with a company called Teradici. Uh, Teradici, they were the pioneers of the PC over IP workflow. It was used inside of VMware solutions uh, in the VDI space there. And we had hardware cards, which could actually do hardware compression of huge amounts of data very quickly without having any CPU load on, onto it at all. All of a sudden, customers are now realizing if you put those hardware cards into workstations and you leave the workstation in the office, then I can still have access to that from a home. And there's various different ways where you can configure that, and I'll touch on a, a couple perhaps. Uh, but it gives you that hardware compression. So you're not robbing anything from the workstation itself. We've found out over the years as well in the last, you know, let's say five years, that network bandwidth and latencies, network bandwidth increased, network latency has reduced. So you can now work further and further away from the mothership, as it were, and still not have the lag or the latency or waiting on mouse cursor movement or whatever else, which detracts you from the zone of working. Uh, it takes you out of that. So now with these hardware solutions, we can actually have you being as effective as you were inside of the office. And a great advantage of that is that you can actually even reboot the machine should it hang with the applications inside of the office as well. Uh, because the, by virtue, again, I don't want to go too deep, but there's a little plug on there that goes in, which allows you to control the motherboard and you can control the power remotely. So I, I from my home, if I'm working and then I do something which, for whatever reason, causes everything to lock up, I don't have to send somebody in in these times of crisis to go and press the power button to recycle it so that I can then become productive again. I can actually do that remotely. Right? So it, it's become a very, very effective solution. And customers are being excited by that currently. So going forward, obviously, this is going to change the, the world and the industry as well. People are going, I think, going to embrace more remote workflows if they can. Um, how do you see that changing the industry and what trends do you see building off of that? Oh, I think it's something which has always been bubbling under about, okay, am I going to use remoting in any shape or form? I mean, even when you're a media studio and you're working with partners in a collaborative fashion, how do you ship your intellectual property safely and securely to work with those partners? Um, and it's always been a technology which has been around. And I think we're going to now start to see remoting really leveraging that in the times that we are, because uh, it's proven to people that people working remotely are still productive. 
Uh, there, was a, there was a lot of reticence, I think. I don't want to put words into people's mouths. But, you know, there's reticence in higher ups, perhaps, that, oh, well, do we want people at home? We want them where we can see them. And now they've realized that there are adults out there and you know, people are still productive, right? They realize they've got a job to be done. They realize they're being given a lot of responsibility, right? And they still end up producing what they need to produce, just in a different way of working. And in much the same way, I think we're going to see that collaboration now increase because all of my data being in the data center, I don't have to ship it anywhere. I can just give people access to my virtual workstations or my centralized workstations, access those remotely from home and still have all of the power at my fingertips, collaborate with my colleagues, collaborate with my partners and still end up producing something which would be as good as working on it on an individual basis in an office. Now, what do you say to people that ask about security issues? Well, I, I say to them that one of the benefits of this solution is that all of your data stays in the data center. I, and if your data center isn't the, isn't the most secure place in your organization, there's a different conversation we need to have. I, but the, the whole data is secured inside of there. It's all in lockdown. Your workstations are now co-located with your data. So now you're not going across the pieces of wet string that the IT department might call the network. And you're now actually inside the data center network where you've got far wider pipes that's feeding the information to you. All of your storage is there as well. So for your large media files and uh, what you're deploying there, I don't have to drag them down waiting 20 minutes for a file to transfer across the network before I can work on it. And then another 20 minutes to upload it after I've worked on it. At the end of the day, you're now speeding up the production process. Right? And so consequently, the security is improved manageability is improved because now all of your hardware is centralized. Uh, again, simple things like somebody logs a support call at home, right? They've got a home-based workstation. How do you send somebody out to fix that workstation? Right? With social distancing and everything else, it, we, we can't do things like that currently. So again, if I have all of my equipment in a secure central location where I control access and egress to, then I've now got a far better environment in these current conditions for managing my entire network and keeping my engineers, my designers, my whatever's actually active and being able to use resources which have got maximum uptime. Sounds good. Gary, thanks so much for sharing your bits of wisdom. And um, I don't know, finally, if somebody was just starting out, to set up a remote workflow? What would be the top one or two tips that you would give them? Oh, um, yeah. First off, it's like, do it if it makes sense. Okay, I mean, at the, at the end of the day, you can do lots of different things. You can buy a bicycle and you could bicycle from the East Coast of America to the West Coast. Just because you can doesn't mean to say you should, right? So analyze what you're doing and make sure you, what you're doing it for the right reasons, not just because it's a knee-jerk reaction. If you discover that, that these people need the access to their workstations at home, think about the data. Okay, it's not just about enabling at, uh, at the home address, it's how do I enable security for my data in that whole workflow process? How are you gonna do that? I, and then the, by far the simplest way of doing this, just to see if it works for you or whatever else, is to have the client on, at the home address Right, so they're accessing from there, whether it be a software client or a hardware client. If you want to do 4K video editing or anything like that, so 4K workloads, you have to have software to software. It's just a way of the world. Um, but if you've got 1920 by 1080 p as a standard workload, fine. Use hardware to hardware. You have the hardware. You go through a VPN connection into your host network in the company side, and then you have your workstation on the host network. So by using a VPN tunnel, you've got the security at either end. Most routers nowadays support being a VPN endpoint, or you could supply your end user an endpoint VPN device. And then your enterprise VPN acts as the place where they're accessing, and then you've got secure access across the network, and your data never leaves the premises. Simplest way to set it up. Fantastic. Gary, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me, Randy. Appreciate it.